It seems like Indiana Jones 5 is about to lose heavily at the box office department. The movie had a budget of $300 million production alone. Marketing costing maybe another $100 million separately. The film has grossed around $100 million worldwide as we speak, creating net lose of around $300 million. Why did this happen? Where's the rest? The money, Skyler. Where is the rest? <laughs> How did one of the most famous and well-known IPs like Indiana Jones end up losing millions at the box office? Is this the end of franchise films and well-known nostalgic IPs? Is this the end of Disney's reign as the biggest Hollywood movie studio? Is the anti-Disney movement from the right-wing circles having mainstream effects? Is this maybe similar to the entire anti-Bud Light right-wing movement, or are audiences tired of Hollywood ripping them off using old recognizable IPs? For any movie to work, for any movie to succeed, the film has to have a strong foundation, and that foundation has to be the story the film builds itself around. Did Indiana Jones' The Dial of Destiny have a strong foundation, a strong plot? No. It did not. The film revolved around finding a goober, a metal goober that could create an interstellar time travel situation. There's always a bypass key, a virus key, a who cares key I can never remember, so I always call it a goober. Give it. The film went from one destination to another. Car chases and boat chases, trying to figure out who has what and who wants to go where. That's all the story Indiana Jones Chapter 5 had to offer. Did the film have any strong characters to make up for a flimsy plot? Well, yes and no. Indiana Jones had old grandpa vibes, knocking on doors and being a party pooper. You know, there's a Midgardian word for women like you. Party pooper! <laughs> <laughs> there, I said it! Indy throughout the film tagged along passing the same stubborn grandpa vibes, judging young people and their lives dropping wise age old wisdom from destination to destination. Indy reminded me of Into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker, lazy, depressed, tired, too old for all of this globe-trotting adventure. My man Indy simply wants to rest after all these years of adventuring, but unfortunately Disney loves nostalgia and the amount of cash nostalgia brings to the table. Jokes on you, Disney. Not this time, baby. Not this time. Making cash grabs one after the other only works for so long. Sadly, Disney's days of ruling Hollywood is coming to a sad, somber end. I don't blame you for It's nobody. over. What is? It's over. What? All of this. I'm done embarrassing myself. I'm done. I'm done. Nobody I'm showed up. So what? I can't pay back the theater. This is so... No more billion dollar IPs for the Mouse House. The second character, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, is one of those Disney characters made from the same cloth as Rey from Star Wars or even the black female character from Pixar animated film Lightyear. Oh yes, the same light year that bombed at the box office, creating a huge shortage of money for the Mouse House. Ray Skywalker from Star Wars would be the exact character that Phoebe Waller-Bridge plays in Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny. Her character is called Helena Shaw, but I'm gonna call her Ray Skywalker because it's the exact same character, the same Mary Sue feminist female empowerment character that we have come to expect from modern Hollywood studios. The kind of female character who is better and well-suited for the adventure, the Mary Sue who is perfect the way she is, loved and adored by her male counterparts. The kind of character who doesn't require rescuing, she simply wants the male characters to move aside so she can rightfully take over from stubborn and old male counterparts. Oh yes, Ray Skywalker wants tired old Indy to move aside so she can have her rightful moment as the star of the entire movie, the kind of character all women can proudly identify with. Oh, she's literally me. I am her. Hitler made mistakes. And with this, I will correct them all. You stole it. Then you stole it. And then I stole it. It's called capitalism. <clears throat> oh, could two Harrison Ford characters from the same studio become the very same, Han Solo and Indiana Jones, both from Lucasfilms and Walt Disney Pictures? Both those Harrison Ford characters turned into the very same. I would even argue that Disney tried to turn Indiana into Luke Skywalker, a stubborn old man, a complete loser. <laughs> oh. 
who need a purpose in life and that purpose is the Mary Sue, strong female character, she becomes his purpose, wow, how empowering for all those young boys who are watching your films Disney. Thanks for all the proud male representation, good job. Okay now it seems like there are no good characters, maybe there are a few many good villains, villains drive the plot forward, oh yes, it's the Nazis, oh yeah Indiana Jones fights Nazis again. Do the Nazis have superpowers? Nope they're regular old classic Nazis, who wants to take over the world, same old Hollywood Nazi cliche, overused and overdone, boring old Nazis. Mads Mikkelsen, one of the best actors in Hollywood today, plays another Disney bad guy who wants to take over the world. I feel terrible for Mads Mikkelsen. Man has been typecast as the evil overlord bad guy by Hollywood. He's been playing the same character in Hollywood forever now. Man cannot catch a break. Poor fella. He does the best he can with whatever is given to him. There was very little he was offered. Dude gives his 100% and plays a perfect and classic Nazi, the best of his abilities. You don't know how to use that, do you? Uh. Since the story and characters were all dull, you might wonder if the action was any better. Did the action make up for all the dull characters and plot lines? Yes and no. There were times when the action stood out like a Mission Impossible movie, except we know all the stunts and action were performed in front of a green screen. The movie started with a chase scene at night, Indy going after a train and figuring out where the goober is, those scenes felt like a James Bond Skyfall situation. I have to say all the action scenes felt like a mixture of Marvel's James Bond and Mission Impossible, the action was the only part of the film for me at least, the only part that did not disappoint. The chase scene with an auto rickshaw and the plane chase scenes kept me on the edge of my seat. That's the only forgivable part in the film. At least the action didn't boring me to death. Unlike certain other Disney movies nowadays. I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? They all blur together after a while. Ugh. Are you done? Are, 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 you, are, you, are you done? At the end of the day... All I care about is whether the film entertained me. Did the movie engage my curiosity? Did I spend two hours of my time in the theater watching the movie, or did I tweak my smartphone? And the easy answer is no. The movie did not engage with me for its entire runtime. Half of the time I spend scrolling through my feed on social media, Twitter, YouTube, and other channels, the film has no originality. The movie felt like just another Disney movie with bloodless action scenes and over-the-top action set pieces that follows no logic or reality. Tough movie to sit through. I really wish the director James Mangold cut half of the runtime. The movie went dragging on and on for a long while. I really wish the film didn't lag and drool through its runtime. I really wish Indy had something to do in the third act. I was hoping for a fight scene between Indy and Mads Mikkelsen Nazi. I wish the giant Nazi had a fight scene with Indy, wish there was more magic in the movie, so much potential to be a great Indiana Jones movie, yet the film fails to reach great heights. The relationship between Indy and Ray Skywalker didn't feel organic, it gets forced, the godfather and daughter relationship felt plastic and unoriginal. The relationship between Indy and his wife felt a bit untidy too, completely cutting off Shia LaBeouf character in the name of army enlistment and his death off screen seemed extremely unpolished. It didn't gel well with me. I mean, I get it. He's another controversial figure like Jonathan Majors, abusing girlfriend and everything, but beyond all of that. You could simply recast the actor with somebody else. Hell, I'd be fine if you cast Tom Holland or even Tom Hardy. I mean, who cared just recast the old actor? No, you had to kill of that male character, didn't you, Disney, for a cheap and unoriginal emotional cut for old man Indy. At the end of the day... Indiana Jones' The Dial of Destiny is yet another Disney nostalgia bait that fails to entertain normal movie-watching audience. Yet another mousetrap that fails to captivate audience interest. Watch the film. It's a subpar Mission Impossible movie staring Harrison Ford and Ray Skywalker. Give him hell, Indiana Jones! <laughs>